In today's show, I'm looking at the fantasy basketball waiver wire, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. We're doing the waiver Wire show today a little bit later than usual. As I mentioned multiple times last week, I was away uh, for a couple of days back now. Um, and the waiver Wire show is here for you. Now, when I talk about these ads, it's not like you need to add in every situation. You don't need to drop the guys in every situation. They're just names to mention, to talk about, and I can't cover every single person who's must roster or has options to add. We try and keep, you know, hit you know, 30, 40 players per show in these waiver wire shows. Maybe not that many. Maybe it's 20, 20 to 30 players, but we try and cover off a fair bit that is happening across the league. So let's cover off that right now and talk about some players who I think can be dropped in. This is ma- mainly for 12-team category leagues. Um, Josh the Hitman Hart. I don't think we're seeing him again this regular season with this thumb surgery. I think he misses all of the rest of the regular year. He's been great this year, especially over the last six weeks or so. I think he's a drop, though. LaMarcus Aldridge. I know that a lot of people have been rushing to add LaMarcus Aldridge after his Nets debut. I just don't think that that's worth it. Now, by all means... He's had some decent games. There's been a couple of nice block performances. There's been one game where he had good assists, but I just don't see that overall upside in holding Aldridge. Again, because that just removes your streaming ability in that spot. It removes your ability to add other hot players and performances that are coming up. And I just think the... And maybe, look, from here on out, maybe he's the 140th best player. And you go, well, that's 12-team worthy. And the answer to that is, yes, it is. Not that you ask the question, but yes, it is 12-team worthy. But it's not worth holding over getting a guy who might be top 100 or getting a bloke in for two days who might be top 50, James Johnson for the Pelicans, for example, and then dropping him and getting the next bloke in and then dropping him and getting the next bloke in. That sort of limited upside, which I think Aldridge has in Brooklyn with all those other guys who are going to be getting those minutes, um, is tough for me to consider must roster. Larry Markinen, Jack Armstrong, what do we think? Get that garbage out! Again, he could be better than he is now. He might see his minutes go back up. Maybe he starts again. I don't think any of those things are going to happen. But the upside in holding Larry is just so marginal that I just don't think it's worth doing. Steven Adams has been a droppable guy for a very long time, but still rostered in way too many leagues. I thought I'd bring his name back up again. And now he's in the concussion protocol. So if you needed that extra push for you to move on from Steve Adams, this probably is it. And then Tim Hardaway Jr., another guy who's just unfathomably rostered in so many leagues. He can be a points guy. He can be a three-pointers guy. And that can have value as a stream option. But to be rostered in like 94% of advanced league, and it's been that number basically all season, for a bloke that's playing 25, 26 minutes off the bench and not doing anything else apart from scoring and doing that inefficiently, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So if you are still holding Tim Hardaway, It's got to be for a pretty good reason. And again, I think you can get more value out of streaming that spot. And streaming that spot might mean adding Tim Hardaway Jr. on days where Dallas plays, but not just holding him consistently all throughout the season. If we go to points leagues drops, yeah, Larry Markin on that list again, Tim Hardaway Jr. on that list again. Joe Harris, we're seeing... Yeah, the production from him dropping at the moment, and he's not the best points league player to begin with, so I don't really think that Joe needs to be rostered in as many leagues as he is. Um, Tyler Hero is an interesting one. Everyone has a hero. True. Zero people shouldn't have a hero. Out of this list, I'd probably be the most hesitant to drop Hero, but with Dragic, Kendrick Nunn returning at some point, Victor Oladipo arriving, Duncan Robinson around, I just think the upside on Hero, who has been underwhelming at times this year, it probably isn't there to just have him as a must-roster guy. And if you're not a must-roster guy, then you do become subject to being droppable. And I think that's where Hero sits, whereas Kobe White, I think he's just a clear drop. Um, injured at the moment, low minutes coming off the bench. And like Markinen, maybe he does move back to start at some point. Maybe he does go back and play 32 minutes. I'd be surprised. And even then, I don't think the upside in hoping that happens is worth holding on to him through the injuries and through the trials and tribulations. But he is not uh, not playing at the moment, and he's still rostered in far too many leagues. Let's look at some guys we can add across category leagues. Some is short-term, some is long-term. Eric Bledsoe is a guy that is only the 200 rank ranked player this year. So he's rightfully been dropped months ago. But with Nikhil Alexander-Walker hurting, Josh Hart out, 
Kyra Lewis potentially injured as well. Bledsoe is going to go back to playing 30 plus minutes. The usage is probably going to spike. And there's a real opportunity for him, at least in the short term, while Alexander Walker and Lewis are out, you know, to, to put up numbers which are okay. And Hart being out long term means instead of those 25, 26 minutes a night, Bledsoe was getting through a large portion of this season. That probably goes to 30 minutes a night. And then he can have some value. Now, he is going to be rough in terms of shooting percentages, but I do think at least for the short term, he has value. You could say the same about his teammate James Johnson, while Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson out, and an absolute elite short-term ad. Isaiah Stewart dropped in a lot of leagues because the last couple of games he's had some foul trouble. But Mason Plumlee is resting on Monday. Is this the beginning of a more wholesale resting plan for Detroit, or is it just because it's a five-game week? I'm not sure. But Stewart, if he gets 23-24 a night, he has fringe 12-team league value anyway. So we add him for Monday. We see what happens over this week. He's got five games this week anyway. So you're going to get one start and then four bench games at absolute worst for Isaiah Stewart. And then let's see what it does. Because if Plumlee starts resting one game a week or resting one half of every back-to-back, there's two back-to-backs this week for the Pistons, Stewart's going to have a lot of value. So I think he's worth grabbing and seeing what happens. Grayson Allen, I shit on this guy a lot. But to be honest with you, over the last two weeks, he's a top 100 player. Getting steals, hitting threes, scoring well. They're playing him a lot. That's one of the key things. Now, I, don't, I think it's ridiculous that he plays as many minutes as he does, but his net rating stuff has been pretty positive, and his overall on-court production has been pretty positive. So I do think that Allen, while he's playing this well, is worth looking at. Thomas Sadoransky, to go counter to what we said about um, Kobe White, Sadoransky is a starting point guard. He dropped double-digit assists today. He gets steals. His shooting numbers are usually pretty good. I don't think he should be sitting on any wave wire at all. And Chuma Akiki, I only mentioned him because I had a look at his roster percentage. It's under 50% in Yahoo. Like, he needs to be on a roster in all 12-team leagues. His shooting has improved. His free throws, which weren't that good at Auburn, and they're like 85% over the last two months. He's getting good steal and block numbers. He's upped his assist numbers. He's playing a pretty solid role. Now, there could be some drop-off, especially in the efficiency, but he needs to be on a roster in a 12-team league. Should not be on sitting on any waiver wire. In points leagues, Tumor's on that list again. Jay Sean Tate, the wild thing, shouldn't be on waiver wires. Miles Bridges. Now, this is a guy that I think is worth mentioning. Montre- yeah. Try again, mentioning for category leagues as well. Bridges is a guy that needs to be on a roster. Gordon Haywood injured for four plus weeks. Bridges started today. He wasn't particularly great, but the you know, 31 minutes a night is encouraging. He can hit threes, block shots, get steals, score a little bit, grab some rebounds. Like a poor man's prime Rudy Gay. He's not pro- prime Rudy Gay. He's not current Rudy Gay. He's sort of somewhere in the middle. A guy that just touches every category, does it with average to below average or above average in certain areas in those categories, and giving him from 27 minutes to 31 minutes is enough to push him into absolute must-roster territory, and that's in categories and in points leagues. Kelly Olenek, another guy in a category league I'd be adding, but I can't list 30 guys in points leagues, and you've got to add him here. He should, he's getting great minutes off the bench behind Christian Wood and behind Jay Sean Tate, and he's playing, well, basically every game for the Rockets. And then the salt flake, Theo Maladon. He can be rough with the percentages. There's no doubt about that. But in points leagues, that doesn't matter quite as much. The role seems to be his for the rest of the season. They're dealing with Dort and Gildas Alexander injuries now as well. And there's going to be ups and downs for, for Teo for sure. But I don't think he should sit on any waiver wires in points leagues. Let's have a look at some deep league options. RJ Hampton started for the Magic on Sunday. I don't know where they're going to go with him and Carter Williams and Chase and Randall and Gary Harris. I'd like to see them develop Cole Anthony and RJ Hampton and give him 27 a night. I'm not sure Clifford does that, but he was super encouraging today. So in a deeper league, I'd add him. Malachi Flynn, I think he's going to be in the rotation rest of the season. Lowry's out. Van Vliet might be out. So at least you get some short-term value out of Flynn, but he could have some longer-term value as like a 15-minute-a-night guy. Cole Anthony, I think he's going to be a 12-team league player. But for now, in a deep league, I'd add him to Stash when he returns from his rib injury, and hopefully he pushes back to 30 really soon. Trevor Ariza is the starting power forward in Miami, and while he's not going to touch really 12-team leagues as more than a streamer, in 16-teamers, he's a must-roster, and I think in 14-teamers, there is some value there. And Taj Gibson, no Mitchell Robinson. We know Tom Thibodeau is going to roast, well, not roast him, he's going to uh, rooster him. He's going to be really excited about giving Taj as many minutes as possible. Nice field goal percentage bump, nice rebounding, nice block numbers. Available in a lot of spots. I'd add him in all 16s. And probably, to be honest, I think 14 team leagues for Taj is, is correct as well. Let's look at some must roster guys. I lowered my threshold here. These are all players who are rostered in under 80% of Yahoo leagues, who I project to be top 100 guys the rest of the season, therefore shouldn't be on a waiver wire. Rob Williams, this is a top 30 guy, top 40 guy at worst. Can't be on a waiver wire. P. 
PJ Washington Jr. Now, I know he's been shit house the last two weeks, but I still wouldn't leave him on the wire. Tyrese Halliburton, name who's been on the list all season. I, people have got their thumbs up their asses. I don't know what they're doing. He needs to be on a roster. Wendell Carter Jr., clearly the Magic's best center, putting up big game after big game. Love it. Derek White. Field goal percentage can be a problem with him. We've seen that at times, but I do believe he's a better shooter than this. He should not be sitting on any waiver wires. Chumura Kiki, talked about him plenty. Kyle Anderson, well, I don't think the Spectre Jaron Jackson's coming back to play big minutes at any point this season, so Anderson's pretty solid. Nerland's Noel, now Taj is going to cut in, but if he plays 25 a night, he can still get 1.5 steals and 1.8 blocks, and that's enough to be rostered. Larry Nance Jr. is available in, in over 20% of leagues on Yahoo. And I know he's dealing with an injury at the moment, but I wouldn't leave him available. And Thad Young, also available in like 25% of Yahoo leagues, needs to be on a roster. Darius Garland, 29% available on Yahoo. Why? Why? Must roster. TJ McConnell, 50% available on Yahoo. Needs to be on rosters, even though I do have some concerns about him. Needs to be on a roster. Jay Sean Tate, must roster. Yucca Pertle, why is he available in over 20% of leagues? And then Terrence Ross. He's going to probably hurt your field goal percentage, but a lot of volume coming here for Terry. Some popular ads over the last couple of days. Jalen Brunson playing really well. Don't mind taking a flyer on him. Shake Milton, not really sure why everyone was adding him. He can score occasionally, but I just don't see any long-term value in him. Miles Bridges, talked about him already. Really strong ad across category and points leagues. LaMarcus Aldridge, disagree with that completely. And then Alexei Pokyashevsky, um, I think he should be rostered in all 12-team leagues. Poku, and has been added quite a bit lately. Can fill it up in multiple areas. He's going to kill your field goal percentage most nights, but I love his multi-categorical production. In terms of hot players, these are guys who over the last week are top 100 and then rostered under 50% of leagues. Corey Joseph, I don't buy that at all. I would only look at him as a streamer and more for deeper leagues. James Johnson. James Johnson. No Zion, no Brandon Ingram. Putting up big numbers. He is, for at least the short term, a must roster player. DeAnthony Melton, you, oh, what a shock. He's a top 100 player. Stunning. stunning. What, what, got to catch myself. Um, the problem we have is relying upon Taylor Jenkins to play him good minutes. But even in the bullshit minutes that he's been getting, he's putting up good numbers. Do I look at him as a must roster player? It's pretty hard with those minutes, but an elite streamer. Terrence Davis. Fueled by that really big performance last game where he hit seven triples. I think he's more of a deeper league guy, but he's got a solid role, 20 minutes a night. He is impacting Buddy Heald a little bit. That's something to watch. And Davis can be at least a at least a 16 or 14 team league streamer. And then the Shark, Bruce Brown. Baby shark, do, 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 do. Not to be confused with the Shark, Dwayne Bacon. Bruce Brown, with injuries to Harden and Durant, the minutes have gone up. I don't really buy that, and I wouldn't be counting on him to be a 12 team league option. And then lastly, let's look at some flyers. Isaiah Thomas in New Orleans. If we have um, Alexander Walker, Hart, and Lewis all out, Thomas might have to play 25 minutes a night. And that's going to be useful, at least for deeper leagues. I don't really buy it long term. And the same goes for Najee Marshall. If Zion and Brandon Ingram continue to miss time, Marshall could play 25 to 26 minutes a night and be a sneaky 14-team league guy. He scored 12 points in Sunday's game. Malachi Flynn, I touched on already. There is some value there with Lowry out and now Van Vliet ailing. RJ Hampton, I've talked about already, but I like that. I think they should be trying to get him 25 a night every game. I don't know that they will, but they should, and that is intriguing. And then Jalen McDaniels. Yes, not Jaden McDaniels, who is a must-roster player, and I didn't include him because his roster percentages were too high. Jaden McDaniels of the Wolves should be rostered in every league, but Jalen McDaniels of the Hornets. Because without Gordon Haywood, that's you know, 34 minutes to go around. Bridges was already getting 28 a night, so that's six minutes extra, or you know, three minutes extra that Bridges gets. And there's Caleb Martin, there's Cody Martin, but Jalen McDaniels showed some flashes last year. Now, the Hornets are still in the playoff picture, so they're not just going to say, screw this, we're going development. But Malik Monk's hurt, and now Haywood's hurt, and LaMelo Ball is hurt. There's a chance for Jalen McDaniels to play 22, 23, maybe 25 minutes a night, maybe. And just keep an eye on him, because he can be a multi-categorical producer. It's more just a watch scenario, but he is a flyer given the injuries there in Charlotte. Guys, that'll do it for me today. Don't forget to subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on YouTube. And on YouTube, hit the notification bell, give a thumbs up, and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.